How's it going everyone? Chris here and welcome back to another Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Countdown video. We only have 72 days left until the game's release on December 7th and today we will be talking about another supposed leak. As always, and I cannot stress this enough, we have no idea if this leak is true or not, so make sure you take it with a grain of salt and realize that I am talking about this just for fun. If you'd like to read along while I talk, you can find a link to the original post in the description bar down below. And now, with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the newest leaks. So the first leak that I want to talk about today is actually a Smash Brothers character leak and it comes from 4chan. It's titled Smash Ultimate Leak and it is posted by Anonymous. It starts by saying, Sup Anons, here's another Smash leak for ya. Don't want to say how I have this info because it would give away too much, but let's just get on with it. Let's start with the newcomers. I'll begin with Pokemon because there's a lot to explain. Sakurai truly wanted to make this ultimate Smash game by representing all of the generations, which means three more playable Pokemon, Sceptile, Incineroar, and Haxorus. Another reason Sceptile and Incineroar were chosen, besides representing Gen 7 and 3, was because with Greninja they complete a fully evolved starter trio separate from Pokemon Trainer. Also, Sceptile had the most votes out of any Pokemon on the Smash ballot. Haxorus was chosen to represent Gen 5 and to save development time because he is a semi-clone to Charizard and has very similar moves. For example, Outrage is reworked Flare Blitz and Haxorus keeps Rock Smash unlike Charizard. Microsoft and Nintendo have gotten even more friendly because they will be getting two new reps, these characters being Steve and Banjo and Kazooie. Steve was chosen because Minecraft's popularity and influence in gaming. Sakurai also loves Minecraft and he was happy to include him. Banjo and Kazooie were because of their popularity on the Smash ballot. Though not a clone, Banjo and Kazooie do have some borrowed assets from Duck Hunt like their jab. Square Enix is only getting one more character and that's Geno. Again, Geno was very popular in the Smash ballot and has been aware of his popularity for a while. And Sakurai has also wanted to include him before. Bandana Waddle D is the newest Kirby rep. Like other characters, he was chosen from his popularity in the Smash Ballot and in general. Isaac from Golden Sun is also playable. That's why his assist trophy has not been seen. Again, he was chosen because of popularity in the Smash Ballot. So now that we've gone over this entire leak, let's talk about it a little bit. So first of all, let's talk about the Pokemon newcomers. So the first Pokemon that I want to talk about is Incineroar because as you guys know we talk about Incineroar all of the time. Vergaben leaked Incineroar a while back and now everyone thinks that Incineroar is going to be our new playable Pokemon rep and honestly I feel the same way. For those of you guys who don't know, Incineroar is actually like one of the most used Pokemon in competitive Pokemon play as of now, so it makes total sense for him to be in Smash, especially since Decidueye took a spot in Pokémon. After that we have Sceptile, and honestly at first I was a little confused as to why Sceptile would have been added in, but then this leak started to make a little bit more sense. As of now, we have Greninja as a fully evolved water Pokemon, and then if we also had Incineroar as a fully evolved fire type Pokemon, it makes sense that we would get Sceptile as a fully evolved grass type Pokemon. Not only that, but it does represent the three starter Pokemon types in their final evolutions, and honestly that just makes a lot of sense to me. Then we move on to Haxorus, and this is where things start to get a little confusing. So for those of you guys who don't know that much about Pokemon, Haxorus is the Generation 5 pseudo-legendary Dragon-type Pokemon. If any of you guys ever watched the Pokemon Black and White anime, one of the main characters named Iris actually had a Pokemon called Axew, who evolves later into Haxorus, so that's kind of like a base for him. Now, apparently, according to this leak, Haxorus is going to be a semi-clone of Charizard, and right away that's kind of a red flag for me. I say that because Haxorus is a pure Dragon-type Pokémon, and Charizard is a Fire-Flying-type Pokémon. So I've been thinking about this a lot, and if Haxorus is a semi-clone for Charizard, I'm not sure what they would change his Flamethrower to. I assume they would change it to something like Dragon Pulse, but the moves like changing Flare Blitz to Outrage and keeping his down special as Rock Smash make a lot of sense to me because those are both moves that Haxorus could use. And honestly, now that I've thought about it a little bit, I could totally see Haxorus making it into the game as our Generation 5 Pokemon rep. 
After the Pokemon, we move into the Microsoft representative. So according to this leak, apparently we will be getting two new Microsoft reps. Those being Steve from Minecraft and Banjo and Kazooie. So in terms of Steve, as you guys all already know, I now officially believe that Steve is going to make it into Smash. We know that Sakurai likes Minecraft and he's played it and he thinks that he can make him a really unique moveset. And also, Steve is one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. And Vergaben says that he is going to be, there's going to be some Minecraft representation in the game, so why not give him a character? And then in terms of Banjo and Kazooie, I can also see them making it in. They were very popular on the Smash Ballad, and Phil Spencer has said that he would be happy to see them join the battle for Smash. So honestly, both of these characters make a lot of sense. The only issue I have with this is that it doesn't really make sense for Microsoft to get two representatives. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but it just seems a little weird that Microsoft is getting two. After that, we move on to the brand new Square Enix character. So, for those of you guys who don't know, Vergaben stated a while back that Square Enix was going to get a character in Smash, but he didn't know who it was going to be. However, I think we all knew that Geno was going to be the character that made it into the game, and according to this leak, Geno will be making it in. Remember that Geno was very popular on the Smash Ballot, and Sakurai knows how popular he is, and he wanted Geno to be in Brawl. Along with Ridley and King K. Rool, Geno is one of the most popular characters to make it into Smash Ultimate, so obviously I think that he is going to earn a spot and make it into the game. Another reason why I think he's going to make it into the game is because in Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, he got his very own Mii costume with a splash screen. He was the only Mii costume that, get, that got this splash screen, so it's just way too obvious that he's going to make it into Ultimate. After Gina, we move on to Bandana Waddle Dee. So for those of you guys who don't know, Bandana Waddle Dee is very popular around the world, but he is especially popular in Japan. He had a very good presence on the Smash Ballot, so obviously he does deserve a spot in Smash. Not only that, but he is now Kirby's official player 4, so when you play the Kirby games you have Kirby, King Dedede, Mennonite, and Bandana Waddle Dee, and we didn't get a Kirby rep in the last game, so I think it's very likely that we are going to be getting one in this next game, and Bandana Waddle Dee fits the bill perfectly. And the last character on this leak is Isaac from Golden Sun. The reason we haven't seen his assist trophy yet is because he is playable. Again, he was chosen because of his popularity in the Smash Ballot. So, as all of you guys know, there are tons of people out there that really want Isaac to be in Smash. And obviously, he does deserve a spot. You know, Golden Sun is a very underrepresented franchise, but they do have a very large fan base. So I think out of all the Golden Sun characters, Isaac has the best chance. So I could totally see him making it in as the last character. So now that we've talked about this entire leak, do I believe that it is true? Honestly, at this point, I'm leaning more towards yes than no. The reason I say that is because every single character on this list has evidence that shows that their inclusion in Smash is totally likely. The only part I'm a little iffy about on this is the inclusion of Sceptile and Haxorus, but at the same time, there was enough evidence there for me to feel confident to say that they might have a chance of making it in. Let me know what you guys think about this leak in the comment section down below, and now let's move on to the next leak. This next leak I believe is fake, but I wanted to take a look at it just because it looks really funny. So apparently, in the demo version of the game, Waluigi was originally supposed to be playable. In the picture you see on screen now, you see that next to Ridley's character icon you can see Waluigi in a pose that I actually haven't seen before. Now, what gives this away is fake. Well, first of all, we all know that Waluigi is an assist trophy and not a playable character. I know a lot of people have theories going on right now that apparently Waluigi is going to be a playable character and Sakurai is just trying to throw us off by saying that he's an assist trophy. But guys, honestly, I do believe that he is going to stay as an assist trophy. And if Sakurai does end up doing something crazy like that, honestly, I would be super shocked and honestly a little weirded out. Like... Why would he go to such great lengths to do this? I don't think he's trying to appease the Waluigi fans that much. The next reason that I believe that this picture is fake is because of how bad the quality is. At this point, most people have a smartphone in their pocket, so pictures shouldn't look like they are being taken by a potato. Honestly, that's just my own opinion, and maybe this guy was just trying to take this photo really fast, but I don't understand why he would go through such great lengths and then just give us this really bad picture. I don't know. 
personally, if you're going to risk your job like that, you might as well give us a good picture instead of a bad one. And finally, I don't see a name by Waluigi. I see Ridley's name, I see Inkling's name, Little Max, Mewtwo's, but I don't see a name under Waluigi. Obviously, we know that every character is supposed to have their name under them, so it doesn't really make any sense that Waluigi doesn't. Let me know if you guys can see his name, because maybe I'm just missing it. But yeah, you guys know that I'm a huge Waluigi fan, and I really wish that he made it into the game, but unfortunately he didn't, so we're just gonna have to move past this, and unfortunately, this leak is 100% fake. So now let's move on to the most recent news from Sakurai. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about today actually comes from Sakurai himself. So for those of you guys who don't know, Sakurai writes in a column called Famitsu, and someone took the time to translate it, so let's read what it has to say. So I found this on Siliconera.com, and its title is, Sakurai says to expect the Smash Bros. Ultimate character announcements to slow down. It starts by saying, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was revealed back in March of this year, and we've already had 9 newcomers announced for the game, but Sakurai says that it might slow down until it's released. We announced Isabelle in the Nintendo Direct, Sakurai wrote in his weekly Famitsu column. However, it would be a mistake to think that the new character announcements will keep going at this pace until Smash Bros. release. We may have been a little trigger happy, so we'll be living modestly from here on out. While on the subject of how close the game is from going gold, meaning complete and ready to ship, Sakurai wrote, It'll be complete in just a little longer, or so we expect. So now that we've gone over everything that Sakurai has said, let's talk about it a little bit. So, the first thing I need to say is that Sakurai is a man of mystery and nobody knows what is going on in his head. We may think that his announcement of saying not to expect too many newcomers means one or two more newcomers, but to him, too many newcomers might be four or five or six and seven. We don't know what's going on in his head. You guys have to remember that in each installment of Super Smash Bros., he gives us a bunch of new characters, so maybe we're just going to get the same amount of new characters that we got in the last installment, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. However, maybe he does just mean we're only going to get one or two more characters, and maybe that means that the two characters that Vergaben leaked, Incineroar and Ken, maybe those are going to be the final two characters revealed. Honestly, I can't really see this happening, but because we have DLC, I guess it does make a little sense. They have a strict deadline of getting this game out on December 7th, so obviously they're going to try and fit as many characters in as possible, but at the same time not put too many in because they don't have the time to do so. Another thing we have to consider is the box theory. I know I haven't talked about it that much on this channel, but I'm going to get into a little bit now. So for those of you guys who don't know, a, a promotional box was released that had all of the characters on it, except for a couple blacked out spaces. That means people have started to theorize that there's only going to be two more characters left, so maybe that's what this means. Maybe there are only going to be two more characters, and maybe Incineroar and Ken are the last fighters we're getting. Honestly, I don't really know, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. We all know that Sakurai is going to give us a big reveal, so honestly, the amount of characters that I think we're going to get is somewhere around 3 or 4. I think that's a good number, and I think that would appease every single person. So before we get out of here, make sure you guys go check out the description as well as the pinned comment because that is where you can find not only my Discord but also my Patreon. So in terms of my Discord, we now have over 2100 members and we're always talking about Smash and Nintendo stuff and stuff like that. So make sure you join, it's 100% free to join. And also if you want to support the channel outside of just watching this video, you can do so by either donating in the link below or also supporting me on Patreon. Never feel obligated to, but if you want to help me out, that would mean a lot to me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, share, and like, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.